What's the word, y'all? Special announcement. I, Kenny Beecham, will be tanking this season. Because <laughs> I need a shot at Victor Wabanyama or School Henderson, boy. Them dudes was really out there giving us a show. If for some reason you was watching NBA preseason over this, <laughs> you missed out on one of the greatest matchups you could imagine from a number one prospect and a number two prospect. They even put together this graphic of number one and number two going against each other. It was like Paolo versus Chet last season. It was this player and this player. None of them compared to this. Because Wabanyama ended with 37 points on 11 from 20, seven made threes, and School Henderson ended with 28 points, five rebounds, nine assists. Now, I've been very open with y'all when it comes to talking about prospects and stuff. I'm not a dude that watches college basketball, and that's double when we talk international prospects, and that's triple when we talk G League Ignite. Like, of course, I've heard these names. Like, I, you'd have to be living on the rock to not have heard these names, but I've never watched any film. But I was so excited to watch this game because the Bulls gave up 40 points in the first quarter of their preseason game, and I was, I was, I was over it. But I knew that people consider Victor Wabanyama the best draft prospect since LeBron James. And that is saying a lot because I was here for the Anthony Davis hype. It was real and he delivered top 75 player of all time, even if you disagree. I was here for the Zion Williamson hype. I, I was here. And people are saying that Victor Wabanyama is a better prospect than both of those guys. And based on what I saw today, again, it's a one game sample size, but I completely understand. I, I can't call you crazy. And it works double when he's dropping bars like this. He's really a great player. If I was never born, I think he would deserve the first spot. He's talking about Scoot, of course, who just went against him, who also had a very amazing game. But that's a that's a bar. Hypothetically, if he is exactly who we think he could be, he turns out to be a generational talent. He's one of the greatest of all time. This quote right here, especially if Scoot ends up being the guy as well, this quote, they're going to be talking about this in his 30 for 30. Now, people are saying that this guy uh, messed up a translation because he said it in French. Either way, it was real. And you know what? Scoot held his own. This man's school had a lot of question marks. Uh, okay, not a lot. But one of the biggest question marks was like his jump shot. That's the only thing I keep hearing about him. Oh, he's he's uh, prime prime John Wall potential with prime John Wall's jump shot. You're like, oh, okay. I'm, of course, that's a great player still. But like, you want to be able to hit the jump shot, especially in 2023, right? Um, first play of the game. Takes a mid-range jump shot, hit one. And he's very efficient out there. But I was so impressed with his playmaking ability. I mean, of course, if you compare him to the prime John Wall, then yeah, of course, he's got to be a very good playmaker, though. But, like, it was a couple really, really, really tough passes he made. And some of them didn't turn into assists. Um, I don't know what the level of talent is around them. Like, I don't know. Is it G League Ignite and elite level players from player 2 through 15? I don't know. I, I don't watch. Or the... Team, what team did Victor Wabiyama play for? The 92, 92ers, M Metropolitan 92? Do, ha do they have NBA players? I don't know. But Scoop made a lot of amazing passes. If I'm not mistaken, he only ended with one turnover. And the, the degree of difficulty on a lot of the passes he was making was, was out of this world. But to see this team, or to see Victor Wabiyama at one point, his team down by 20 points, you know, we were still watching. We were still watching because I wanted to see these dudes compete. But to see him bring his team back, specifically in the third and fourth quarter, to see him end up with seven May threes is insane. I saw a tweet that seven May threes in five blocks has only happened one time in NBA history. Of course, you know, it's different. It's going to the G League tonight. It's not NBA. It's only happened one time in NBA history where somebody has hit seven threes and, and blocked five shots. And you will never guess who it was. It was goddamn Danny Green. Yeah, you was thinking, uh, did Dirk have a real good blocking game one day? Or, you know, a big that could stretch the floor? It was Danny Green. <laughs> hey, Danny Green, one of the best transition defensive players of all time, for sure. Um, but we ain't seen this before. So I completely understand. Now, I've watched some videos. I'm be honest with you. Uh, Jimmy High Roller dropped the video a little while ago about Victor Wabanyama. Shout out to Jimmy. 3.1 M's on this video. You can see I watched it its entirety. And in the video... You know, he he puts some very good points about the fact that Victor Wabanyama's 7-3-7-4, and typically in NBA history, 7-3 and 7-4 players don't succeed, and it's not normally due to their ability. Well, I mean, in some cases it is, for sure. But it's mostly because he's 7-3 and 7-4, and them knees be giving out, the feet, all of those things. And now, of course, we're not wishing that on nobody, but it's, it's a real thing. But if I had the first overall pick, I don't give a damn about that. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Give me Victor Wabanyama. I am 
tanking. But if I had the second overall pick, <laughs> I'm not too mad either. And the crazy thing about this draft class, of course, we talk at one and two, but from all accounts, like three through eight, three through nine are really solid too. You got the Thompson twins. Th those are pretty much the only guys I know in this draft so far. So as we get closer and closer to the draft, I will learn more names. But people are saying, yeah, number one and number two might be generational. But if you get three, you're probably mad that you didn't get one or two, but you can still walk out of there with a per player that might end up all NBA once upon a time. But I'm watching this game and I'm just thinking about the context of the NBA. When Victor Wabanyama gets drafted, what team do I think he would fit best with? And the same thing with School Henderson. And, be, and I, I was trying to be relatively realistic when I put together my list of teams I would like to see these players get drafted to. Uh, I'm not going to add the Golden State Warriors because obviously the Golden State Warriors, you add it. And James Wiseman got a ring and he ain't even playing. You know what I'm saying? Like Victor Wabanyama added to that team would be solid. But I'm like teams that we believe have the opportunity to potentially get that pick because let's be real i know a lot of nba executives are watching the same stuff we is and they like oh snap maybe <laughs> maybe we should take a little bit harder this season like we got the teams that we know 100 percent are going to take we're talking about the utahs of the world we're talking about the spurs of the war we we know that those teams are tanking but there's like these younger teams these younger frisky teams like the houston rockets they got a they got a decent amount of young talent on their roster but it's going to be hard to tell Jalen Green, let's not win some extra basketball games. You know what I'm saying? With the Detroit Pistons, it's going to be hard to tell Kay Cunningham not to take a leap because we want to get the first overall pick. So, like, it's going to be rough. The first team when I watched Victor Wabanyama, and this is kind of a, a shot in the dark because this team has people on their roster that, like, this is not a necessarily young team. They have a young star, but, like, we got 30-year-old second highest or highest paid player. This is a team that has been in the play in the last couple seasons, so they haven't been bad enough to potentially get the first overall pick. It's the, it's the Charlotte Hornets, y'all. LaMelo Ball and Victor Wabanyama would be crazy. I'm just I'm just imagining the craziness there because let's be real, LaMelo Ball deserves to have another weapon or two on the roster. And that's kind of disrespectful to the people that they got because they have a solid roster, don't get me wrong. But like if you if you told me that the Charlotte Hornets halfway through the season was sub 500, I wouldn't call you crazy. And if I'm sub 500 halfway through the season, I'm buying into the tank especially when I have LaMelo Ball, who's only, what, 21, 22 years old at this point. I will buy into the tank because what are, what are we even playing for at this point, especially if this draft class is as stacked as it could be? I'm going to do alternating things. I'm going to do alternate things. Scoot, the team that I looked at, and I'm like, man, they could use a primary ball handler because they got some people on their roster that are intriguing. Some of them haven't been able to really stay healthy, and some of them more of like shot creators for themselves and not really others. It's the Orlando Magic. But the Orlando Magic are another one of those frisky teams. They're like, I look at their roster, and I've talked about this on the channel before. I feel really good about their chances of like scaring some teams this year. Not saying that they're gonna make the play in or make the playoffs. But, like, I think they're over-under. Well, actually, let, I can check what their over-under is. Their over-under is 26 and a half right now, according to this one betting source. And I wouldn't be like, oh, my God, if they hit 27-plus wins. Like, they have competent, young, talented players on their roster. The, the best thing about this is that they do have these flattened odds. So, even if a team like the San Antonio Spurs decide to win 10 games this season, that ain't even no guarantee that they will get one or two. You know, so maybe you could convince your team like, hey, we're going to be good enough to win 25 games. That might be the fourth worst record. But like we still have a eight, nine percent chance of getting Victor Wabanyama. And we like those odds because you still do want to develop your talent. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to just be a team like, hey, we got to get that first or second pick or the future of our organization is, is trash. But I think School Henderson, the, the passes I saw him make today to people that weren't really hitting shots. And I look at some of the people on that roster that I know can hit shots. I'm like, oh, bro, would we'll go out there and average a smooth seven and a half assists this rookie season. Maybe. I don't know. I'm again, I'm I'm really referencing one game. They play again on Thursday, though, which is going to be solid. I don't I wouldn't be surprised surprise if both of them had a struggle game because they just did so much in this one a week or so ago i tweeted this the day of media day um and it's it's victor wabanyama with the spurs and though they don't have like crazy crazy talent already built into the roster i think this will be smooth i don't know how many years of coaching pop has left in his career but I think this would be smooth. I can't say they just started their rebuild, but it kind of feels like they did because they traded their all-star player this offseason. Like, they got some intriguing people for sure. I think Devin Vassell is going to be really solid. His first preseason game, he was out there shooting. I, I like a guy to realize, ain't nobody going to prevent me from shooting, so let me do my thing. You know, Keldon Johnson's got the contract extension and all of that stuff. But, like, Victor Wabanyama with the Spurs, it feels right for some reason. I, I can't explain it. I cannot explain it. 
but it feels right. Maybe, maybe because it's international talent. It, international talents and the Spurs go hand to hand. It's like peanut butter and jelly. This next one is a Houston Rock of school, for School Henderson. I, I maybe, maybe I don't love it too much because of the size of what their future backcourt would be. 6'4", Jalen Green, and 6-whatever, um, School Henderson. They would be a small backcourt. But, like, I, Kevin Porter Jr. has to show me a little bit more this offseason for me to say, or this regular season for me to say, hey, he's the point guard of the future. He's only 22 years old, so it's crazy to say I'm, I would give up on him. But, like, I wouldn't prevent drafting School Henderson because Kevin Porter Jr. is on the roster. You know what I'm saying? And they already got some stuff over there that I really love, especially Tarisen. So he'll be another guy. It's hard to find places for a point guard because it seems like every organization has their own point guard. But when you really that nice, who give a damn? I have to find this tweet that somebody sent me. Because I, I think it, <laughs> I think it um, fits exactly what I want to say about this next one. Actually, the Houston Rockets get fit for Web and, Web and Yama as well. Because even though we love Sengun and all of that stuff, Web and Yama, again, based on one game, he seemed like the type of dude that would be able to play with another big and be successful considering he's hit seven threes today and when he was switched on onto guards he was basically reaching through them to pick the ball loose like that's how long his wingspan is like it feel like he can hold his own against some some good people out there it was a tweet of a young tim duncan and an old david robinson playing against each other in practice and it said chet and web and yama next season I mean, if there's going to be a team that's going to end up with a top two pick again, it's going to be OKC, right? It's going to be OKC. Chad is out for the season. I just I'm not saying I don't like it, obviously, but the the amount of pounds in that front court will be like 206 combined between a seven foot one guy and a seven foot four guy. They would be they would they weigh the same as me. And don't get me started if Poku's also on the court with them. So I, it, it would fit, I guess. Again, I don't know, but sure. Add, add them to the list. This actually made me want to watch more like international or like draft prospects. Like I know the Thompson Twins are in the overtime elite. So I might watch some overtime elite this season and stuff like that. Because if if the people are saying what they're saying is true and that the rest of this draft class is solid too, I need to lock in, bro. I need to lock it in, especially if my Bulls... Never mind. We don't even have our pick this year. It's top four protected. Actually, beautiful. The Bulls knew exactly what they were doing sending a top four protected pick this season because Victor Wabanyama and School Henderson are going one and two, and the Bulls would have one of those picks. <sighs> yeah, that's what we hope, at least. Realistically, um, th there are not a lot of teams that both of these guys could go and fit into because when you have talent, everything around you will go into place and Victor Wabanyama got drafted to a team that we like oh we don't want him there if he is as talented as he he is it, it won't really matter and I'm specifically talking about the Utah Jazz legit I'm being honest with you I, I wouldn't want to see him in the U, Utah Jazz uniform re realistically but if he is there he'll figure it out you know he'll figure it out as as great players do either way that's a wrap we will be talking about some more preseason um, we got some games tomorrow that I wanted to wait for. Like, I wanted to see the Cavs, and I don't even know if, like, Donovan Mitchell and them are going to play, but they play tomorrow. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then we'll officially overreact because, if I'm not mistaken, after tomorrow, every team has played at least one preseason game, and then we can just talk trash. You know, that's, that's what we do. JK, we enjoy basketball around here.